There's a Bering Sea beach where you can land bush planes and walk up to the biggest bull walruses in the world. You can even pet them if you wish, although they stink like skunks. The place is called Cape Sinovan, and it's probably best accessed from King Salmon, which has daily airline service from Anchorage, and then by hiring a local bush plane operator to fly you down the Alaskan Peninsula. Kodiak and Standpoint have commercial flights as well, and other bush pilots who specialize in off-airport landings, so take your pick. In any event, get ready for the best adventure of your life. I learned to fly airplanes and helicopters after high school, worked as a chief pilot and flight instructor for a few years, and then started my own Cessna dealership specializing in bush planes and float planes. I sold them all over Alaska, Canada, and the high Arctic, which gave me the opportunity to fly from one end of the far north to the other. One of my best customers owned a hunting lodge on Bear Lake, which is 116 miles north of Cold Bay, the last stop before the Aleutian Islands. I learned the whole length of the Alaskan Peninsula is the best natural habitat in North America, not to mention its wonderful beauty highlighted by smoking, snow-capped volcanoes. It just doesn't get any better than this. Plus, big game is always running all over the place not to mention every water bird imaginable. Then there are the two-ton walruses, which is a very rare wilderness experience indeed. Step one in this incredible adventure is making reservations on the airlines to Anchorage, with Alaska Airlines probably being the best choice because they can take you all the way to King Salmon. Once there, you will meet up with a bush pilot who will fly you south to Cape Sinovan. Prior to this, of course, is that you've done your homework with your computer and iPhone. So you've picked the flying service that has the right bush plane with big tires that's needed for safe takeoff and landings on the sandy beaches running north and south of the Cape itself, which are clearly shown in my YouTube video. I suggest you camp there a week or more because the walruses aren't always there as they often leave to feed in the clam-rich Bering Sea. Never fear, though, because they will return. July is probably the best month, but they always spend their summers at Cinnamon, so June and August are okay, too. Camping beside the Bering Sea is serious business, and you must come prepared. The best plan is to pitch your tent on the high ground that runs above the beach and prepare for the warp speed winds and horizontal rain that regularly hits the Alaskan Peninsula. What's more, bring along a satellite phone for emergencies, a bear gun, bear spray, although it's usually worthless because it's so windy, binoculars, bug repellent, water purification tablets, my bear alarm called the pack alarm, and most important, good camera equipment with telephoto lens. You're on a real safari, just like in Africa, so conduct yourself accordingly. Stay alert. Practice safe distancing from the ever-present bears, and don't scare off the walruses. Someday the federal and state governments will lock up the place if you do. There's salmon fishing within walking distance, great beachcombing for artifacts, principally Japanese hand-blown glass balls that have torn off fishing nets and floated all the way to Alaska, and maybe even fossilized ivory tusks if you get lucky. It's legal to pick up walrus skulls and tusks within a quarter mile of the beach, although you must register them with a wildlife officer once you get back in town. Bering Sea beaches are one big, long treasure hunt for valuable relics. There are two guest lodges within 20 or so miles of Cape Sinovan, if camping isn't your thing. Bear Lake Lodge is legendary for its hunting and fishing and Wild Man Lodge has a good reputation as well. Both use bush planes to fly their guests around the Alaskan Peninsula, and both offer all the creature comforts one could want. Wild Man even uses a helicopter to reach secret rainbow and salmon fishing hotspots, so it doesn't get any better than that. Guest lodges are always pricey, but really worth it if you're not on a budget. Regardless of your choice of creature comforts, Keep this wonderful adventure on top of your bucket list. Please subscribe, click like, and let me know in your comments when humans first started living on the Alaskan Peninsula.